15th, six o'clock. First up, we have a presentation, Council Member Poli. Y'all can come on up if you want. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, today, Councilmember O'Connell and I, and I give Councilmember O'Connell a lot of credit for bringing this to our attention, uh, want to present a resolution to uh, Parnassus Books. It's recognizing the 10th anniversary of Parnassus Books located in Green Hills. So I'll start with the uh, resolution itself. Whereas on November 16th, 2021, Parnassus Books, the beloved independent bookstore located in the Green Hills neighborhood of Nashville, Tennessee, celebrated its 10th anniversary. And whereas Parnassus Books is co-owned by novelist Ann Patchett and business partner Karen Hayes, and whereas after the closure of the Davis Cook Bookstore in December 2010 and borders in May 2011, Hayes and Patchett realized the needs for a smaller, more personalized independent bookstore that sold new books for all ages. And whereas on November 16, 2011, Parnassus Books opened with Hayes as the managing owner and Patchett as the publicity machine and face of the store. <laughs> and whereas close to 3,000 people came through the bookstore on the grand opening celebration day, and Parnassus Books garnered notable national attention. And whereas New York Times ran a front page article about the store on opening day, and a few months after, uh, later, after penning an essay in the Atlantic about the experience, Ann Patchett was invited to appear on the Colbert Report. And whereas Parnassus partnered with the Nashville Public Library System and Humanities Tennessee to become a part of the widely popular Salon at 615 author series, which continues today. Over the last 10 years, the Salon at 615 series was hosted nearly 200, has hosted nearly 200 nationally known authors and celebrities, including Pat Conroy, Barbara Kingsolver, Jimmy Carter, Colson Whitehead, and Stephen King. And whereas in 2012, the Salon at 615 Partnership gave then Mayor Carl Dean the framework to launch the Nashville Reads Program, an annual citywide read to broaden Nashville's literary horizons. The collective clout of the partnership enabled the Nashville Reads Program to bring authors like Margaret Atwood and John Lewis to town. And um, whereas that same year, Humanities Tennessee invited Parnassus to become their book selling partner for the Southern Festival of Books, a festival which brings between 200 and 300 authors to Legislative Plaza for three days each fall. And whereas in addition to the bookstore in Green Hills, Parnassus has a store within the Nashville airport and has an online literary magazine, Musing, which features author interviews, staff recommendations, and Patchett's blog posts, and the infamous Shop Dog Diaries. And whereas online business has become so strong that Parnassus has staff dedicated to online sales and has had to rent office space to use as their shipping center, in 2016, Parnassus doubled the size of the bookstore to 5,000 square feet and... Whereas in 2019, Parnassus was created to help fund the provision of books to children attending Title I schools with, with plans to increase funding and giving in 2022. In celebration of their 10th anniversary, Shop Dogs of Parnassus was published, the sales of which will go to the Parnassus Foundation. And whereas Parnassus continues to support the Nashville community by providing a 20% discount to K through 12 teachers, hosting local school shopping nights to help raise funds for schools, providing sponsorships for local nonprofits, and by supporting and promoting local authors through events, store displays, and social media. And 
Whereas, over the last decade, Parnassus has made many best bookstore lists from around the world and has been featured in multiple national and international publications, including a recent essay in the New York Times by columnist and local author Margaret Rinkle. And whereas Parnassus has roughly 30 employees, providing them with health insurance and 401k benefits, and was able to keep all employees on payroll during the COVID-19 pandemic shutdown in 2020. And whereas Parnassus is renowned for their friendly and smart booksellers, thoughtful book recommendations, and curated displays, their rotating cask of, cast of shop dogs, and for the unique personalized experience that makes the store a truly special place for kids, adults, locals, and tourists. And whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council recognizes and celebrates the 10th anniversary of Parnassus Books and wishes them many more years of continued success. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate that you take the time because I know you all are busy to do this for an independent business. Um, really, independent um, businesses in this town are, are what is the, you know, what makes Nashville unique. So thank you for recognizing that and thank you so much for this. Anne is very happy with this. I've got with, uh, with me our marketing director, Elise Adler, and our store manager, Andy Brennan. And both Anne and I thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, Council Member Roberts for a presentation. All right. I, I, I'm going to give it to my second. Isn't that a pretty thing? Yeah. Actually, I think I should kind of stand while that's happening. Yeah. And then ask him to. I'll ask him. I'll ask him. So I'd love if, if the Boyd family would come stand with us, if that's okay. That's a lot of you. <laughs> that's right. It's all right. It's all right. That's fine. <laughs> Big family. Yeah, come on up. Come on. Yeah. Sharon, Sam family, we got to squeeze on in like, you know. <laughs> okay. This is a resolution recognizing the 125th anniversary of the R.H. Boyd Publishing Corporation, which I'm lucky enough that it fell into my district, but thank you, Councilman O'Connell, for bringing this to my attention. We'll start with, whereas in November 2021, R.H. Boyd Publishing Corporation celebrated its 125th year of service, as well as five generations of leadership, and... Whereas R.H. Boyd Publishing Corporation, formerly known as the National Baptist Publishing Board, NBPB, was founded in 1896 by Reverend Dr. Richard Henry Boyd and is now run by his fifth president and CEO, Dr. LaDonna Boyd, and... Whereas, after the Civil War and the Emancipation Proclamation, R.H. Boyd moved to Texas as a freed man and helped organize the Texas Negro Baptist Convention, as well as organize and serve as pastor to several churches in Texas before establishing the National Baptist Publishing Board. And... Whereas the NBPB became the principal source of religious publications for black Baptists worldwide. And by 1906, it was the largest African-American publishing company in the United States. And 
Oh, where'd it go? Whereas the NBPB's publications are considered to have played a key role in establishing an African American religious and racial identity in the United States and Whereas R.H. Boyd Publishing Corporation has a long-standing tradition of producing, publishing, and distributing biblically sound and culturally relevant Christian education resources, materials, and church supplies, and... Whereas the publishing company takes prides in focusing on the needs of the African American community and works with numerous churches, pastors, bookstores, distributors, seminaries, authors, and conference attendees, and... Whereas every June, R.H. Boyd Publishing Corporation hosts the Vision Conference, formerly the National Baptist Congress, a leading Christian education conference and fellowship gathering for all ages, and... Whereas R.H. Boyd Publishing Corporation has kept up with the new technology over the years and began distributing ebooks worldwide in 2012 and launched an e-commerce platform in 2013. And whereas the business also has a history of putting resources back into the community through college scholarships from the R.H. Boyd Family Endowment Fund, established in 1982 by Dr. LaDonna Boyd's father, T.B. Boyd III. And whereas, under the leadership of its fifth CEO, Dr. LaDonna Boyd, the business aims to be the leading voice for storytelling through print, multimedia channels, data collection, events, and servicing, and works to lift the voices addressing social concerns and social injustices. And whereas, it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council, celebrating the 125th anniversary of R.H. Boyd Publishing Corporation, and wishes them many more years of continued success. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, the Metropolitan Council hereby goes on record as recognizing the 125th anniversary of R.H. Boyd Publishing Com uh, Corporation. This resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. And I would love for Dr. R.H. Boyd to say a few words. Well, good evening. Thank you so much for this distinguished honor. We are certainly um, so happy and blessed to be able to celebrate 125 years. We would not be here without the support of all of you here in this room. I want to say thank you for all the work that you do to make Nashville a better place. And I thank you for recognizing what we do to try to make Nashville and greater communities a better place as well. And as you can see, I have quite a few family members here. <laughs> so all of us are so proud of the work that we're able to do. And again, thank you so much for this. Thank you. On to announcements, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to remind uh, everyone, particularly members of the Budget Committee and the general public, that we will be having session number four of Budget 101 uh, this Thursday, January 20th. We will be talking about how Metro spends its money at NDOT on transportation, at Metro Parks, at Metro Hospital, and on housing, which is a topic that everyone uh, has a lot of questions about these days. So we hope that people will uh, feel free to come to Council Chambers at 6 um, or tune in on Metro uh, Facebook page um, and watch uh, the opportunity to learn more about Metro Budget and how that money is being um, stewarded well to, to create a great place for Nashville to be. There will be a next uh, session the following week on Thursday, January 27th, where we will talk about 
debt service and general government. So if you wanna find out how we're paying for the sidewalks and libraries, that's your opportunity to do that. So both, both Thursday night, council chambers at six o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Council member Bradford. Thank you, Pro Tim. Uh, just one announcement for residents in District 13 who live on Karen Drive. As it was announced a couple months ago, that uh, neighborhood has been approved for traffic calming. So we will be having a meeting with the community and with uh, NDOT on February 5th from noon until 2 p.m. at the Hermitage Police Precinct Community Room. Um, that way we'll have opportunity for the community and for NDOT to sit down and begin the uh, formal process of planning what they would like to see in traffic calming. So again, that is Saturday, February 5th from 12 to 2 p.m. at the Hermitage Police Precinct. Um, there's more information on my Facebook and RussBradford.com if residents would like to check it out. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Evans. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. I've got two quick announcements. This Thursday at 6 p.m. at the Hermitage Police Precinct, I will be having a District 12 community meeting. Uh, we'll be hearing about the roadway in at Central Pike and Old Hickory Boulevard, as well as other agenda items. If you have questions, feel free to contact me at aaron.evans at nashville.gov. I will also be broadcasting on Facebook Live for anybody who cannot attend in person. Second announcement is make sure um, that you go to the federal government website, covidtest.gov, to get your four free COVID tests. It was released a day early, so go to covidtest.gov to be mailed four free COVID tests to your household. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Pro Tem. Uh, traffic calming community meeting for the neighbors in the Lakeland Drive, Emory Drive area it will be this Thursday, January 20th at 6 p.m. at Lakewood Baptist Church. That's 400 Donaldson Pike. Traffic calming meeting for Lakeland Drive, Emory Drive neighbors uh, this Thursday, January 20th at Lakewood Baptist Church. Thanks so much. Thanks, Council Member. Council Member Toombs. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, there are a few um, District 2 community, a couple of District 2 community meetings, one on January 25th, starting at 6 p.m. at the North Precinct Community Room. That is the District 2 monthly community meeting. Um, there are several items on the agenda on uh, that following Thursday, January 27th. Also at 6 p.m., same location, North Precinct Community Room. Uh, there will be a, a discussion with the planning department over the land use policy for the uh, Ed Ewing project located at 1230 West Trinity Lane. And Councilwoman Gamble is probably gonna announce this as well, but there is a, uh, a traffic calming uh, community meeting January 22nd at 1 p.m. at the Parkwood Community Center. And that does include residents who are on Ewing Drive who are in District 2. Um, so Parkwood Community Center, January 22nd at 1 p.m. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Sepulveda. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. I just wanted to remind everyone that the ARP survey is still out right now. The deadline for that will be the end of the month. So you could tell us on the committee for to to allo to well to recommend ARP uh, spending what your priorities are. Um, we have a preliminary report right now, but there is still time. So go ahead, do that. It's on Hub Nashville. Deadline is the end of the month. Councilmember, Councilmember Gamble. Thank you, Mr. Pro TM. And just to piggyback off of uh, Councilmember Toombs announcement, the Golden Valley traffic calming uh, meeting will be held on this Saturday, the 22nd at Parkwood Community Center at 1 p.m. It's the Golden Valley traffic calming study, but it would also involve Ewing Drive in District 2. So that is this Saturday, uh, January 22nd at Parkwood Community Center at 1 p.m. Also. We'll have our quarterly uh, District 3 meeting on January 25th. It is a virtual meeting at 6 p.m. Information to sign up is available, uh, will be available on my Facebook page. It's already been emailed out to you, and you can also get information by emailing me at jennifer.gamble at nashville.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Hager. Thank you, Pro Tem. Um, I've got a WebEx meeting. Uh, Thursday, January the 20th at 6 p.m. This is a small zone change at 1102 Robinson Road. It'll be a mixture of single family and uh, some townhouses. We'll have a meeting on that. Uh, if anybody interested, they can get on there and we can talk about it. Thank you. 
Council Member, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. <clears throat> Just wanted to let people know that also for a couple more weeks, the uh, as we've had far too many pedestrian fatalities, even as we ended and started the year, the uh, Vision Zero draft report uh, is out and it, they are accepting feedback uh, about the draft recommendations there. So I do encourage people to visit visionzero.nashville.gov, take a look at that report, um, send in your feedback. I uh, also wanted to mention that uh, we are still, as we look at the data about uh, case counts and vaccination rates uh, in those areas where uh, large numbers of people are choosing to get vaccinated and boosted, we are seeing that hospitalization rates are staying flat. So continue to protect ourselves uh, in this community against COVID-19. One of the best ways to do that is to get vaccinated or boosted. And you can visit covid19.nashville.gov uh, to learn about that, as well as testing options that are available. And then, uh, Mr. Pro Tem, I did want to just say, um, be the first to uh, offer my support for your recommendation that tonight, as we are recognized as council members, each of us say, go dogs, rather than uh, recognize the vice mayor. Thank you, council member. I appreciate the support. I know that support will be unanimous in the body. Council member Benedict. Previous question. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> I concur that I think go dogs would be a fantastic thing to say. And as Twitter, as the Twitterverse knows, I lost the bet. Bravo for the national championship win. And M go blue, we will always be great champs, no matter what's going on at my desk. Yeah. Yeah. Is it is it all right for me to sing? Let's see. Please, I encourage you. Glory, glory. To what old is Georgia. It? One more time. To old Georgia. Glory, glory to old Georgia. Glory, glory to old Georgia. Glory, glory to old Georgia. G O R G I A. Good on. Well done. I don't know how anyone's going to follow that. Any other announcements? <laughs> Councilmember Welsh. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Um, yes, um, this Saturday, um, January 22nd at 9.30, we are having um, a community meeting about a proposed rezoning on Antioch Pike. Um, it is a Zoom meeting, and you can find the link to the meeting on my um, Facebook page. You need to register in advance so we don't get a lot of the... Um, the trolls. So um, please um, come to the meeting. Um, let me know what you think. Talk to the developer. Planning will be there to answer any questions that you have. And um, let's see if we can move the district forward. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Anybody else? All right. Five minutes till showtime. <laughs> 